I'm honored to be here with all of you today, and uh, thank you so much for being here on this special day. I want to thank Governor Phil Murphy, as always, for coming to Long Branch and to make this federal funding announcement. I'd also like to thank our DOT Commissioner, Diane Gutierrez-Scocchetti, for her support, especially with our Transit Village Plan. Thank you, Commissioner, for everything you do. Uh, also with us is my brother, Congressman Frank Pallone, who relentlessly uh, works for the betterment of our city and his district. And we also welcome Assemblyman Daniel Benson from District 14, who chairs uh, the state's transportation and independent authority in the, in the assembly. Um, so the pedestrian tunnel to reconnect the east and west sides of Long Branch has actually been a vision of ours for years, if not decades. And it's an ambitious vision, and we would not have been able to do it alone. So we're very excited about the announcement today. And with the funding opportunities of the leaders who I've just spoken about uh, have always fought on our behalf and uh, because of them, our vision is becoming a real reality. I also want to thank New Jersey Transit uh, for investing in Long Branch, already improving the station by repaving, uh, repainting, and, uh, and landscaping uh, throughout, uh, throughout the station. Um, all of these upgrades uh, to the Long Branch train station are vital to Monmouth Medical Center across the street, Monmouth University, Brookdale Community College, and of course our tourism um, industry, which the beach is just a few blocks away. Our new transit village will serve as a hub for not only the trains, but for buses, taxis, Ubers, um, and electric vehicle stations as well. So we're creating better access for public transit for everyone and making, thank you again for making our vision of a transit village neighborhood a reality. And with that, I would like to introduce our Governor Phil Mercer. Thank you. John, thank you. It's, uh, it's good to be in Long Branch on July 6th. Oh, sorry, it's September 6th. I hope Mr. Ramaswamy is watching because it turns out climate change is not a hoax. John, to you and members of your council, thank you for always welcoming me so graciously. We're also joined, as you mentioned, by your brother, Long Branch's own, my Congressman Frank Pallone, Assemblyman Dan Benson, God willing, uh, sooner than later, Chief Executive, County Executive of Mercer County, we have our Transportation Commissioner, Diane Gutierrez-Scocchetti, with us, who's also the board chair of NJ Transit. And in that respect, we have NJ Transit CEO, Kevin Corbett, with us. And I can't say enough about their work uh, and, Frank, your work uh, with the feds uh, behind the scenes to bring us to this day, which is a huge deal day, no matter how you slice it. I want to give a shout out to everybody here especially our friends in organized labor. Ron, great to have you with us, buddy, and all your transit colleagues. We got a lot of carpenters in the house. Uh, Jerome, nice to see you, buddy. Uh, likewise, um, it's an honor to stand with you as always. So to get to the matter at hand today, we are proud to announce a total, as you can see, of $425 million in fed federal highway funding, 315 of it for NJ Transit, and $110 million for the Department of Transportation projects across the state that will make important upgrades, it will fight climate change, and it will most importantly create jobs. I don't want to get into the weeds too much on this, but this is a big deal. Normally funding from the Federal, federal Highway Administration, as Diane knows better than anybody, is restricted to highway projects, but we requested and we received the flexibility to use those funds on a range of NJ Transit and other mass transit related projects. So it is pretty unusual to use highway funds for these kinds of projects and that, that in and of itself is a big deal. It speaks to the high level of trust that the Federal Highway Administration has in us and in our ability to use those funds wisely. And for that again we cannot thank our federal partners enough, and I want to again thank Frank Pallone for always fighting fiercely for this town and this district and this state. I also want to thank Diane and her director of capital investment, Eric Powers, who were the architects behind this arrangement. Now in terms of how the funding will be used, those funds will go toward 
a range of mass transit projects across the state. Everything from refitting bus facilities so they can make the switch to electric, to upgrading train stations to make them more accessible. We'll come back to that, John, as it relates to Long Branch in a moment. To expanding bus terminals so they can handle more riders and expand service. To protecting rail cars from flooding during storms. And we saw that during Ida and so much more. At the heart of all these projects are our efforts to build a stronger and fairer New Jersey. And we're doing that by thoughtfully investing in our state and in our communities with an eye toward the future. You can see that clearly right here, as John alluded to, in Long Branch at this train station, where the funding will go toward a pedestrian tunnel that will finally connect, I was going to say reconnect, but it's been in the 1870s, I think, so it's hard to say we're reconnecting, uh, that will finally connect downtown. For nearly 150 years since this train station was built in 1875, downtown Long Branch has been cut in half, divided by the tracks behind us. So residents have been cut off from the shops, restaurants, and healthcare facilities on the other side. It's a lot harder for businesses to thrive and for folks to go about their daily lives when parts of downtown are cut off from the rest. And I know this is something local residents, businesses, Mayor Pallone, his colleagues on the council, Congressman Pallone and others have been working to fix. As John said, it's been a dream for many years and with this funding, it will become a reality. And this is a powerful reminder of how infrastructure ultimately impacts our lives and the importance of making thoughtful choices. Winston Churchill, of all people, summed it up best when he said, and I quote him, we shape our buildings, thereafter they shape us. How true is that? So when we talk about infrastructure, it's not just numbers on a page or some fancy drawings, but rather our quality of life whether we can walk to our local shops or which areas are set up to thrive or how clean our air is and so much more. This tunnel will mean residents can finally get to the other side of town, which means more customers for the businesses on the other side of the tracks. Meanwhile, the investment that we are making more broadly in electric bus infrastructure, means more clear, which means cleaner air and more zero emission vehicles on our streets, which will help fight climate change while also making, importantly, public transit more convenient. The investments we're making in station upgrades will mean that they're fully accessible, not just to most or some, but all of our residents. And these investments mean union jobs. The overwhelming majority of these projects will be built with union labor. That matters because when we support our unions and help them grow, it also supports and grows our middle class. And it makes the American dream come true for more of our colleagues. Again, with fair wages and worker protections, unions continually, and thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for continuing to create more pathways to achieving the American dream. And that is something that we can all get behind. The last point I want to make is that these investments save local taxpayer dollars. Infrastructure projects are not cheap, and local governments don't always have the budget for them. So every dollar we chip in from the state, or the federal level in this case, is a dollar saved for local property taxpayers. And we're using every tool at our disposal to make our communities more affordable. So when we say we're building a stronger and fairer New Jersey, that means more opportunities, it means more affordability, and a world-class transit system that is part of the climate solution to boot. We all know that New Jersey is America's number one state to raise a family. And with the help of our federal partners, we are ensuring it remains that way with these investments. With that, it is my great pleasure and honor to hand things over to a friend, a great leader, and my congressman, Congressman Long Branch's own Frank Pallone. Thank you, Governor. I, I have to try to be brief because I love all the people in this first row and all of you, and there's so much positive I could say about you, but I'll try to be brief. First of all, I want to say about uh, Governor Murphy. 
you know, he uses the theme stronger and fairer, and a lot of times in, as politicians, we say we have these themes that don't necessarily, we don't necessarily follow up on. This theme is true for him, 100%, right? Uh, stronger, obviously, in creating jobs and improving the economy, making the investments like what we see here today in transportation. Um, so many more jobs have been created, and good jobs, union jobs with good benefits. That's the stronger. There's so many other parts of it. But also the fairer. I mean, I don't think anyone could say that uh, this is, hasn't been the best governor we've had in terms of trying to make this state fair for people, whether you're poor and you're in need, or you're middle class and you're struggling, whether it's your education. He's always out there trying to even the playing field so everybody has an equal opportunity, and he's been successful in doing it. So thank you. Thank you, Governor. Really, I, I, I can't say enough. Now, I have to go to, our, uh, to Diane, our uh, uh, tr Commissioner of Transportation. Now, this woman, like the Governor, they're determined to get things done. That's what they're all about. Um, and what's happening today, uh, she's probably going to explain it, and I, I don't want to take away from her. But you know that we passed this major bipartisan uh, infrastructure bill a few years ago at the federal level. But whenever you do anything at the federal level, you always worry as a legislator whether this is actually going to go to the state, go to the towns, and actually make a difference. Because, you know, there's the federal bureaucracy. I guess that's the best way to put it. And it, it doesn't matter who the president is. Obviously, I love President Biden, and this was all his initiative uh, in terms of this uh, legislation. But you have to worry about how it's getting down to actually matter. And that's where Diane, working with the governor, uh, is best. And that's what's happening today. I don't know. I'm, I'm going to let her explain it. But basically, the problem is there's not a lot of flexibility with federal funds, right? So, you know, we tried to get money for the station through one of the grants, right? And we tried originally with the Tiger grants, and then we finally got the 13, uh, about $13 million through the Reconnect grant, which is separate from this, uh, for the tunnel and for the station. But I'm telling you, it's like, it's like pulling teeth to get this money. And then we still knew that we needed another seven or eight million dollars to complete the project here, the tunnel. And she said, don't worry, we'll figure it out. And she did. And this is a perfect example of type of flexibility that she managed to achieve with the federal government. And that is not easy. I'm telling you, it is not easy. I'll let her explain it. But you have to understand that being able to get this money, both the governor and Diane worked so hard to get the government to agree to do this, right? Uh, and that's, that's her expertise. So I want to thank everyone. I want to thank Dan. I know he's moving on now to be an executive. My brother always said he'd rather be an executive than a legislator, just so you know. Um, and of course, uh, New Jersey Transit, we love. But I just wanted to, <laughs> I know, I just want, <laughs> no, it's true. But I wanted to just talk about how the Long Branch Project um, fits in with this larger issue of flexibility, right? So we were able to get money uh, through a grant um, uh, for the 13, but we needed the extra money, which the flexibility to get them to 20 or 21 uh, million. Uh, but what you have to understand, and I know everybody's mentioned it, but this is how I'll end. Um, this has been such a, a boost in the arm, if you will, for the area, right? If you just look here or look on the other side of the tracks, you'll see a lot of new apartments, uh, condominiums going up. This area, you know, needed a lift. I mean, it had deteriorated to a large extent, right? And when the governor talks about the business, it's the same with the businesses. If you go to the other side of the tracks, you'll see, I mean, there's some famous places over there, like the Butcher Block, right, which is, you know, a great restaurant. But they all suffer because of the fact that people can't come to the other side without going like half a mile around, all right? And so, you know, basically uh, what, what we're doing here with this transit village concept is making it so the town is united, uh, but also the institutions around here. So we have uh, 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 President Leahy from Monmouth University. The students use the train station, right? Uh, thanks to you, Governor, also. They're going to have the new Springsteen Center, right, which is going to attract more people to the area, and, they, and they'll use the train station. 
The hospital across the street obviously benefits in a, in a major way. The hospital donated the city the land um, a little further down here for a new health and technology center. And the state, the governor again, worked with me at the federal level. We got two million for, from the state, another two million from the federal government. So again, this is all the levels of government working together to achieve a common purpose here. And I'm using Long Branch as an example, but, and, and, and maybe that's why we're here, but there's so many more. I mean, the transit village concept is all over the state, and this is what's happening. We were in Woodbridge, remember, uh, uh, with uh, Mayor McCormick to talk about what was going on there. We were in Matawan with, uh, with the mayor and council there. So I know you're in Long Branch today, and of course we're very proud, but I just want you to understand that the governor and Diane and New Jersey Transit and Dan, they've all worked throughout the state uh, to make sure that this money is available uh, to achieve these same ends wherever you are. So thank you again. Now what am I doing? Am I introducing you, Dan? Oh, I'm am I introducing Diane? Oh, well, I already, is it you next? Diane is next. Well, I've already said everything. You're so wonderful. Thank you. Come on up. <laughs> well, there's not actually a lot more to say. Um, so I will not be long, but I do want to thank the governor um, for allowing me to be here today and mostly allowing me to do what I do, uh, which I love. Um, it's an honor to be here today with Congressman Pallone, with Assembly Transportation Independent Authorities Chair Benson, and with Mayor John Pallone. You know, it really is hard to overstate the importance of today's announcement. I do have to give a big shout out to FHWA. Um, both the governor and congressman talk about working with the federal government, which is incredibly important, but it is also very important to understand that when we call on them, they can be flexible. And that flexibility came through our relationship with Administrator Shailen Bott, um, who couldn't be here today, but without him being at the table with us, actually on the Zoom calls with us um, in Delaware on a Sunday afternoon, which is a longer story, um, we probably wouldn't be where we are today because it had to be his direction and guidance that allowed his staff to understand at FHWA the importance of spending this money. Because the one thing we never want to happen is money to lapse. We're not interested, sorry, Congressman, we're not interested in returning it to Congress. We are interested in spending it here in New Jersey, and this $425 million was key. But I want to put it in a little bit of perspective. We keep talking about $425 million. But when we take into account this August redistribution, an August redistribution is simply a time when the federal government realizes it has a, the, the FHWA has a pot of money and they decide they're going to give it to the states. It's a short window. But we look at the 425. Let's look at the last six years. In the last six years, under Governor Murphy's leadership, we have received $830 million of August redistribution. That is, for all intent and purposes, an extra year of federal apportionment, so thank you, Congressman, because it's been very meaningful to us. That's three quarters of a billion dollars. In the 10 years previous to Governor Murphy coming, we got 200 million all in. So think about the importance of receiving so much extra money to keeping our laborers employed, keeping our unions and their families working, keeping our transit projects and our road projects moving forward. The economy of this state thrives on its transportation system. It needs to be kept up. So for us, we are just so appreciative of the governor's unwavering support of DOT and New Jersey Transit that we work together. Congressman Pallone, we are thankful for your tenacity in Washington to make sure that New Jerseyans uh, receive what they need, and we promise not to let either of you down with its additional money. But the true heroes of this whole activity are not in the front row, and that includes me. Um, I love being commissioner, but without an extraordinary team, none of this could happen. So to our current Director of Capital Investment, Eric Powers, to our Assistant Commissioner of Capital Program Management, Parthosa, to Rich Schaefer, I think I see him, our, our Senior VP of Capital Programs at Transit, and Justin Davis, our a, a Senior VP of uh, Government and Regulatory Affairs and the Chief of Staff under Kevin's leadership. None of this could have happened. This had to be executed with precision, 
with a lot of patience and it had to have flawless execution because it wasn't just us. It was the DOT, it was transit, it was FHWA, it was the Federal Transit Administration, and then it was a group of people known as metropolitan planning organizations. We have three of them in New Jersey that had to approve what we were doing, get them on agendas, and vote them in in August, which means many of them had to have special meetings. It was a complex process. So while I get to stand up here and talk about it, the real heroes go to the staffs at the agencies. This is the team that made it happen, but the most important thing I can say is there are many more like this team that understand, at looking, understand the importance of looking at transportation holistically. A balanced transportation system is a successful one. We will continue to work together to ensure that our investments deliver the best transportation system for the quality of life of all New Jerseyans and also for the economic vitality of our state. I just, I can't thank everyone enough for being here on this hot day. This is such a big deal for us at DOT and New Jersey Transit. Um, we are just happy that you all came out to celebrate it with us and the governor especially making time and Congressman Pallone, Assemblyman Benson, Mayor, I know you're happy to have us in your town. When we come, we bring money. So that's what makes it all the better. But uh, thank you so much. And I will turn it over to my friend, Assemblyman Benson. Thank you so much. It's really a pleasure to be here. This is extremely exciting. Congressman Pallone, Governor Murphy, Mayor Pallone, and Commissioner Gutierrez Cachetti, I'm honored to stand with you today. In my role as chair of the Assembly Transportation Committee, I've personally witnessed the profound impact that transportation and transportation investments have made on the families here in New Jersey. Today's announcement marks a significant step towards the quality of life for all residents, not just for this project here, but for projects across New Jersey. This initiative will create good paying jobs with great benefits. To reiterate what the governor's already said, many of these jobs will be union jobs. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention, you know, I see Ron Sable, one of my constituents, Paul Bellardo, another constituent representing SMART and the Carpenters. It's a big deal for their families and the members they represent. So often we know that the best pathway into the middle class is through our unionized workforce. So I want to thank them for being here. The investments announced today will also alleviate the daily commute for so many. And when we talk about that equity and fairness, having families spending more time with each other and less stuck in traffic, be able to do it through public transportation is so important. And just as importantly, many of these investments will ensure more equitable access to our transportation systems than ever before, making them more accessible, handicapped accessible, more ADA reliant, but connecting communities that were divided before for over hundreds of years. And just before, for all of us, it signifies a cleaner environment as New Jersey Transit is able to leverage these investments to transition its extensive fleet to battery electric buses. As chair of transportation, and more importantly, as a budget committee member for the last six years, I've been a vocal advocate on that and proud to have everyone as a partner in state government in making that happen, as well as Congressman Pallone. As former Boston mayor and U.S. Labor Secretary once stated in his 2017 State of the City address, we don't wait for a better future, we create it. Today's announcement underscores the unwavering commitment of President Biden, New Jersey's esteemed congressional delegation, led by Congressman Pallone. Our governor, Phil Murphy, has always been dedicated through his staff and his administration, represented by Commissioner Diane Scaccetti and Kevin, right down to our dedicated mayors all across New Jersey, like John Pallone, to create a better future for New Jersey. Again, as Chair of Transportation, as mentioned before, this is a big deal. I was in the legislature for 12 years. And if it wasn't for leadership like our congressman, and these things didn't happen until we had the governor and the commissioner that we have. And unfortunately, you're doing so well, these things are becoming a little more common. But for the last six years prior to that, this stuff did not happen. So I am so excited to be here because it makes a difference both financially and, as I said, for our families. So thank you. Glad to be a part of this. Dan has been an outstanding uh, chair 
uh, in the uh, assembly in, in the transportation committee, and you'll, you're going to be missed. You're going to be a great county executive, and Mercer is going to be lucky to have you. But thank you for your leadership. Pat, I didn't see you earlier. God bless you, buddy. Great stewardship and leadership of Monmouth University. The Springsteen archives are there. And Diane wanted me to remind everybody, I'm sort of coming off three shows over the weekend at MetLife, that Thunder Road was a DOT project. So it was a quick shout out to you Springsteen fans, perhaps that not as many of you made that, those kids. By the way, he was fantastic. Um, these August redistributions, which a couple of other comments I wanted to make, and I'm going to be brief because it's 1,000 degrees. These August redistributions that Diane alluded to are not easy to either qualify for or execute on. As Diane said, there are independent bodies that have to convene and opine on these um, distributions. I think it's a point of pride that New Jersey got the fourth amount of money of any American state this August uh, behind, I know, Pennsylvania, California, and Texas, all of which are bigger than we are. Uh, and the fact that we punch, we always look at, we're the 11th largest state population-wise, ninth largest e economy. So we're constantly sort of, we can't really control necessarily things like a war in Europe or global inflation, but we can control how we shake out in terms of where we are in the pecking order and this is a particular point of pride. And may I say something else before we close? Um, this is a, a good example that we don't have to agree on everything, but we can agree on most things and still have a really good working relationship. So we're not, I want to reiterate, we're not happy with the Federal Highway Administration as it relates to the lack of an environmental impact study for congestion pricing. But to their enormous credit and to the President's enormous credit, uh, they accept the fact, as do we, that we're not going to agree on everything, but still have a relentless pursuit, as do we, of common ground. And today is a witness. Uh, we witness uh, that. So to everybody, my congressman, uh, Frank Pallone, our commissioner, Diane, Dan, God bless you and thank you for your years of service in the assembly and going forward as county executive in Mercer County. Uh, John, you, you're always a great host. Uh, thank you for having us. Kevin, you had a great summer. Let's keep it up. I mean, we had more concerts, more athletic events. I was on with the head of uh, MetLife the other night before one of the Bruce uh, concerts. There, there's more and more and more of this coming. We're trying to get the final of the FIFA Men's World Cup in 2026. I'm not sure we'll get it, but the fact that we had such a great summer on NJ Transit is a huge feather in our cap. To Ron and Jerome, and to your brothers and sisters, thank you for everything you do. To the Carpenters, I don't know where we'd be without you guys and your colleagues. You're as good as it gets. To each and every one of you, members of John's Council, Pat, Brian, nice to see you, Monmouth County Zone, Justin, the rest of the team at, at Transit and DOT, thank you all so much for everything you do. Stay cool.